And so it's another look at that legendary director, Stanley Kubrick. Now, for anyone who doesn't know this, uh, Kubrick made 13 fiction films over a course of nearly 50 years. Of those 13, the first one, called Fear and Desire, has basically disappeared from availability due to Kubrick's own dislike for the film. He tried to get rid of all the copies that he could and withhold them from the public for personal reasons. The two films that I never saw for the longest time were Killer's Kiss and Lolita. Now, Killer's Kiss has never been available to me in terms of a copy to watch, so that's the reason why I still have to see that movie. But in the case of Lolita, I'm still not quite sure as to why I was so hesitant about watching it. But at a request from an old friend of mine, here's a review of this controversial film based on an even more controversial book. Uh, the film itself follows a middle-aged man named Humbert Humbert, played by James Mason. In the film's story, he falls passionately in love with a 14-year-old girl named Lolita. You can see where all the controversy spawned from, especially considering this was made in 1962. Humbert moves to America for a short while and becomes a boarder in a house owned by a wealthy widow named Mrs. Hayes. Uh, Mrs. Hayes, played by Shelley Winters, falls deeply in love with Humbert, but Humbert doesn't return any such feelings for her. Until he sees her daughter, Lolita, and is smitten by her. And he ends up using the mother to spend more and more time with the daughter. As played by Sue Lyon, Lolita starts out completely innocent and oblivious of his feelings, though it's also clear that she's got budding feelings of her own and she's starting to become aware of herself as being sexually attractive. The mother, meanwhile, is deeply insecure and also feels threatened by her daughter's beauty, even as she tries to win Humbert over to prove to herself that she's still attractive. Meanwhile, we also get introduced to an eccentric writer named Claire Quilty, played by Peter Sellers, whose role in the film was actually really expanded from the book, or so I'm told. And the movie itself, well, like any Stanley Kubrick film, is very well made. The actors are all brilliant, the cinematography's top-notch, but the story is just so hard to get into, at least it was for me. I know Kubrick was hamstrung by the censors of the time, and he was forced to change quite a bit from the original book, more than he actually wanted to, but even with all that aside, this is a dark and depressing film. Obviously, the character of Humbert is one of the darker aspects of the film, but manipulation doesn't stop with him. Other characters in the story have their own agendas, and I really found it hard to sympathize with anybody. Even the writer, despite any humor that Peter Sellers brings across into the performance, is a very unlikable character at the end of the day. But I won't go into why that is. In fact, I won't say much more about the plot at all. Lolita works as a film. And even if I didn't have as good of a time watching it as with some of Kubrick's other movies, I can at least acknowledge that it was a good movie. As to whether I would recommend it, I'm not so sure. But I will say it But I will say it is a Kubrick film. And I have yet to see a Kubrick film that didn't have any fascinating aspects to it. As a closing comment, I'll say that after watching such dark films as A Clockwork Orange, The Shining, and Full Metal Jacket, as well as his more tedious and obscure films like 2001, I really believe that Lolita is the most unpleasant film that Stanley Kubrick ever made. Well, that is, unless Killer's Kiss turns out to be even worse somehow. <laughs> 